see there's enough shade for a few ants or maybe a very small child I'm not entirely sure I'm not entirely convinced this is the best idea but we're in a very beautiful place so those are the Andes the beginning of the Andes mountains And we are here at Luján de Cusho in Mendoza. And we have a parasol here next to us. And we came up with a parable of this parasol. As you can see it in the, on the website, uh, on the air, 
photos it looks like if it's like huge like to cover a whole family <laughs> but really when you come to it you see it's really a selfish parasol it only covers for a single person and Tristan asked me we were thinking about what spiritual parable we can bring up that's biblical right and he asked me what are these parasols for anyway and I said well they are made to give shade to the people right and that's exactly what they are not doing. They're not giving any shade to anyone. That's like a, an egoistic, selfish, one-person parasol, right? And that's that's pretty much the thing about us uh, as people, no? God made us in His image to give glory to Him. And really, most of us are not big parasol or anything. Just we are selfish and giving just shade to our, ourselves. And I think that's the that's the parable, the spiritual lesson for for us as we look at this very small. I mean, you barely. I mean, you can't fit like two people under it if you go below it. But it's really that's the maximum, and, that, and that's the typical the typical soltero uh, person that lives alone, like you know, selfish people that are just focusing on their girlfriend and buying. Uh, a coupe car or whatever that doesn't even have back seats or whatever, right? So that's the spiritual lesson for today. To not be like this aerosols here um, that are deceiving in their presentation because when you come from the from the parking lot it okay, appears yeah. if it's from the whole family and it's not apparent. Well articulated. So there are these thorns here. And also you get them in Kenya, they're everywhere. You see those things? They're just in the sand. Over there. Uh, they're, they're just everywhere. Like, there's no bush nearby or anything. Though. But don't you think they look like demons? I do. Look at, look at that thing. Horns. Teeth. Eyes. And they get stuck in the foot, and they're kind of hidden. You definitely can't see them on the sand. They're just all of a sudden they sting you in the foot, kind of thing, stab you in the foot. I think it's quite a quite a poignant spiritual reality there. That these things, these demons, are just you know, you know trying to get you without you noticing. Quite impressed with the state of this car. Um, quite typical, cracked windscreen, everything. And I think this guy is very keen for someone to steal it because he's just left the keys on the bonnet. Um, he's just like, no, if you want this, take it. sums up the Jezebel spirit better than that. What do you say? True love, poison, sultry look, horrible cobra thing, and Jezebel gold bags. And zebra texture. Exactly. Oh yeah, as well. Gross. And something I've noticed here is like there is a spirit of death that manifests in tattoos and clothing and stuff. There's just skulls everywhere. Yeah, I mean, this is what you'd want to wear, isn't it? You love God, you know, you love people. You want to be a benevolent person. 
but this is what you want to wear. You know, this this shows you off as like a a very godly person, right? It's a joke. Would you buy this wine? No. Because I wouldn't. Look. Look into my eyes. Buy the wine. Okay, tell us about this wine. Yeah, the family of this uh, winery, they are probably Masons. It's called Mal Malo. Mal Malo. Yeah. Mal Malo. It's the vampire font, isn't it? Yeah, it's the vampire, the blood sucking font. Yeah, there's not wine in there, it's blood. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> they have another label with a guy in the, with a goat head oh. sitting in a suit with a tie. Oh. No, I don't want that. So they are sold out. Yeah. On the contrary, everyone should buy this wine. <laughs> <laughs> is, is this the mandala wine? Well, they are probably just new wages, right? You just need, yeah, probably. They, they have this mandala textures here and... You should swap vineyards and just say, let's bring out my own... White like, cap. Yeah, mandala love Jesus. <laughs> oh, wine. Oh, wine. <laughs> Public water fountain. Oop, missed it. Pretty tasty. I approve of that because it's, well... Living water, you know. In a, in some places, water is so expensive. Yeah, this is free for the public. It tastes nice. Living water, water that's always moving, water that's free, like grace. You know, it's good. Pretty really nice ambience in Mendoza. All these trees, like really, really impressive trees, are everywhere. Providing like a really, well, obviously shade or whatever, but it's just for some reason the, the cars seem quieter, even though this is like the city centre. I like it. I was expecting it to be a lot louder and more, like, yeah, I guess, Latino in that way, but yeah. Yay for trees. Yay, God, for trees. It rained very heavily last night, and these these kind of um, these kind of trenches are all over the city and that's what it is. That's how these trees can be fed. Is whenever it rains it catches it and then somehow it distributes into the trees. Um, because this is actually an oasis in a very arid deserty kind of scrubland place and you know there would be no trees here or water or people really without the kind of uh, planned infrastructure of um, man's ingenuity, I suppose, to harness water. Uh, it's, re it's really cool. It's a great testimony to the city that they've built such a beautiful place in such a hostile environment, really. Every knee will bow before him. Our God is a lion, a lion of Judah. Doesn't matter where you go in the world, there's all this cold garbage everywhere. No wonder people are so lost, eh? I, I was totally involved in this before I was a Christian. And it was subliminal, you know, like this is just a lamppost, obviously, in the middle of the city. People see this kind of thing and subconsciously they take it in. And then they think, oh, maybe it is a good idea. Especially if you're sexually impotent or something like that. Something so disastrous in your life and you, you're just tempted to go to these people for help rather than Jesus you know something about this city is um, it is religious but it's not explicitly religious it's not like going to uh, I don't know uh, Spain or Portugal or Italy or something there's no, there are churches here there's no cathedrals but um, it's not so explicitly religious I haven't seen many idol shops. If I find one I'll show you, but you know, where statues of Mary and Jesus on the cross and stuff like that. Uh, and even other idols, whatever. 
that there is any city you go in, there's always that, you know, bent towards trying to steer people into the occult, uh, like the tarot um, sign you just saw or whatever, yoga, all of that stuff, right? Um, but as a city goes, Mendoza is pretty clean, I would say, in every sense. Like, you know, there's no real pollution here. The noise is pretty subdued for the middle of a city, I would say. Um, and just spiritual pollution, there just doesn't seem to be too much of it. Uh, that's very explicit anyway. I've been looking out for evil eyes and pentagrams and that kind of thing. You don't, you don't see it too much, you know. I mean, this is all worldly, obviously. It's just a normal city in that way. Um, some of the buildings are old and very nice. You know, that's a nice building over there. But um, generally speaking, I haven't seen too much of it. Obviously a bit like in the West, in other, so England, America, whatever, Europe, there are you know, graffitis and, and I guess a tendency towards wearing things that are dark and evil, really. Um, but people tend to wear it on themselves rather than like tattoos, for example, there's a lot of people around here with like demonic tattoos, um, whether they're actual demons or skulls or whatever. It's got a bit. And um, rather than kind of being like explicit, people are wearing good things like crosses, I suppose, but yeah, I mean, there is a tendency to kind of promote darkness in what you wear on your skin or like just generally on your on your body you know I'd say there's a big kind of tendency towards I don't know idolization of Western rock bands and things I mean who doesn't even in the West it's like that and, um, a lot of these people don't even speak English yet they kind of like Idolise these people, I mean, it is, yeah, it's yeah. yeah. just, uh, just something I've noticed, is like people tend to wear it on their body rather than it being explicitly out there in the culture here. Um, I mean, this is really the first kind of like garbage kind of tag graffiti I've seen. It is around, but generally out and about, if, you, if you're driving around, there's like beautiful murals. I think they're beautiful anyway. I really like the, the Latino colours, yellows and very, you know, stark red. Um, very, you know, very bright colours. But, you know, I mean, look at this garbage. Hello Satan, how are you doing? May the Lord Jesus Christ destroy you and your kingdom. Especially in this place. I pray all of this uh, satanic garbage that's being promoted here will, will, uh, will eventually dissipate and, and be destroyed. And may holiness and purity be promoted. And if you're hearing me on, uh, on this video, please say amen. Because, you know, at the end of the day, Satan has everybody completely deceived, right? Why is it a good idea? Someone, someone tell me, why is it a good idea to wear demons and skulls and things that promote death? Why? I don't even, I don't even get it. And thankfully these are all closed down. I mean, I mean, look, that is really, really well done, apart from anything else, right? But look, how, look how evil it is. I mean, it's literally ridiculous. And this is all over the West as well, it's not just here, but I mean obviously with these very bright Latino colours, they stand out more and they do it in a different way, of course, but it's the same spirit, different place, same spirit, same evil spirits. Even things like this, you know, idolisation of sports figures, you know, it's everywhere, it's everywhere you look, really. I'm tired of it. Are you tired of it? I don't even know. 
Why is no one else making videos about how tired they are of this garbage? Just seeing it all the time, just infecting our, our minds and our hearts in a subliminal way that you can't even get, get out of, you know? Come here and shop with you, love Satan. You look like that guy. Why not? I mean, doesn't he look like a, a really cool person? You know? Honestly, I would rather lose all my teeth and have no eyes and just look really, really ugly compared to looking beautiful and promoting that garbage. I mean, look. Look, look at that. <sighs> this is what Disney looks like in the spirit. Hey, Mickey. Sabotage. Just a kind of interesting point here. Just like passing these uh, very shiny, amazing things. You know, there's the World Cup. You know. People spend their entire lives training themselves just so they can put one of these on their mantelpiece or wear it around their neck or something. You know. This symbolizes. I guess ego idolatry uh, to me. I mean, obviously, you want to be rewarded for you know doing things that are a special achievement. And you know, if you train your body as an athlete, then of course, you know, it's nice to receive some kind of reward uh, and respect. But at the end of the day, like, you know, does this really mean anything in terms of eternal life? You know, I want, I want the the crown of eternal life, not this garbage. Right? And if people spent as much time focusing on the kingdom of God as much as they do on, I don't know, training their bodies to win things like that, then, you know, we'd be in a very different world right now. There's, a, there's the main idol here. This one. Yeah. As a mural artist myself, I, I love to check out murals, but I mean, there is real darkness behind, under the scenes here. I mean, even the posters are put on top, right? But then you see like the Latin humor kind of coming out in, in the murals as well, so that it's not just darkness. I mean, that's cool. And they'll go, yeah, baby. Yeah, you move your head just a little bit to the left. Yeah, that's lovely. Oh, I got you, I got you. Snap, snap. Lovely, lovely. This is what serving the devil. Buy it. Immortality in the sun and grave. Just having a cup of tea here. Um, very nice. Peppermint tea. Just thinking uh, as I'm kind of viewing the whole place you know the beast system well it's been rising for years now but it's infected everywhere in the world doesn't matter if you're in latin america or the middle of london or i don't know you could be you could probably be in antarctica and find illuminati freemason garbage symbolism and stuff or just like the signs of darkness, the manifestations of darkness, you know, like the demons in people. Like it's not explicit here, but the demons in people are manifesting in their skin, uh, you know, as in like skulls and, and demons and stuff on their skin that they've tattooed, whatever. They, those demons in them have made them kind of, you know, manifest themselves. Um, or on clothing, you know, like I've seen a lot of very occult clothing, uh, upside down crosses, tree of life symbolism, Kabbalah tree, uh, you name it. I, I mean, I've seen satanic stars, but I haven't seen them on the walls really. I haven't seen them like just like kind of, except unless it's just like people's graffiti, which is also just a manifestation of what's in them, you know. Um, but generally, I think the Freemason element uh, is pretty hidden here I'm sure there's a Freemason temple somewhere but um, yeah uh, I'm gonna keep looking and see if I can find something because <laughs> it's fun right and and we are called to expose the darkness you know 
don't don't join in with the works of darkness and set, instead expose them this is what exposing darkness looks like to me you know just pointing it out look there it is you see it it's not like you know this guy's a heretic and he's a you know he's a, a wolf and a false prophet and you should you know condemn him he's absolutely you know no good whatever i mean there are absolutely some people i absolutely will never listen to um, kenneth copeland or, or any of that crowd uh, I, 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 I won't openly, you know, condemn them. You know, I hope they all repent and come to find the actual truth. Uh, it's definitely not what they're preaching, that's for sure. But anyway, let's continue the search. I haven't seen many manifestations of the evil eye, but that's one of them, I suppose. It's kind of innocent. I mean, it's an optical centre, you know. Nevertheless, it's there. As an, as an artist who does street art, you know, this is all very eye-catching and interesting for me. But it always, had, and even in my own art, when I was mural, a uh, mural artist before I was a Christian, I was doing this kind of stuff, same kind of colours and things like that, I was a bit British about it. But then, you know, you get this kind of thing, you know, breaking the chain, Eye of Horus in the, in the triangle, obviously Superman, or superwoman, I don't even know. It's kind of androgynous, isn't it? it? You know, while it's very cool to see this, I mean, look, I mean, look at that. The devil has control of the entire world, right? And, uh, you know, it's kind of like Mammoth's Day. The earth is in Mother Nature's hands or something, I don't even know. It's like Gaia, maybe. Yeah, so I mean, there's a South American looking faces there, indigenous perhaps, I don't even know. Yeah, then you get the writing on the wall, I don't even know what that says. But yeah, I mean it's everywhere really, all the writing. People are very vocal about what they put up. You know, you'll have a lovely piece of art like this, and it will literally have like graffiti about someone's political agenda on it, which is fair enough, you know. I mean, it's very well done, isn't it? Very well done, really. But yeah, it always has that occult look. Um, manifestations again. I mean, oh, look, here's some interesting. Right, I mean, that's obviously normal garbage. Dross of people's minds being painted on the wall. Stuff. 
if you've ever done this kind of thing, you need to repent. Because right? this is defacing what is essentially a very nice building, right? It's a bit dilapidated, I'll give it that, but I mean, this kind of thing is a manifestation of the, the unsettled, peaceless torment that's in someone's heart, you know? And ego as well. I mean, why do I want to know your tag, your name? You know, this all creates like a dystopian atmosphere. And uh, uh, in, in my opinion, like this, this garbage like, is kind of artistic. I mean, this one here is kind of artistic, that one. But it's still garbage, you know? It, it doesn't add to the atmosphere. This one does. That's nice, right? That's a serene atmosphere. But what's next to it? Look at this. How does that add anything, you know? It's an interesting sign. One eye symbolism. The pyramid. Look over here. You expect that. I haven't seen too many churches here. This is obviously a Catholic church, I would say. But someone's written something very interesting here. Dios Estado Diablo Revolución. Well, <laughs> interestingly, the revolution is actually Jesus's, not the devil's. The devil's been running this place for a long time. And he paints it as though he's new, as if, as if he's like a some kind of, you know, revolutionary, we need to throw off the shackles of freedom, according to religion, and, you know, embrace the occult and, and be free in spirit and mind, and it's all garbage, it's the, other, it's the opposite, it will put you in bondage. Um, believe me, the devil doesn't love anybody, and he's a liar, and he will take your soul to hell if you listen to him. Um, and he'll be gleefully doing that, you know, like all these people who think they, they serve him who get rewards. <laughs> he'll reward you in this life, but there's a cost. And, you know, it can be as subtle as this. This guy here is on the horse. Yeah, this is San Martin. This is the, uh, I don't know if he's the Mendocian national treasure or whether he's the Argentinian one. I think he's the Argentinian one, but you know, the main road here is called San Martin. Everywhere's called San Martin after this guy. And obviously this great memorial to this man of war is, uh, you know, right in the center of this uh, actually very nice plaza here. But yeah, I mean, if that doesn't symbolize, I don't know, Sata satanic glory. I don't know what does. I mean, you know, real glory looks like a man hanging on a cross naked, having been beaten to almost to a pulp. You know, unrecognizable because he's been beaten so hard. That's what real glory looks like. Because he did it. He, was, he wasn't a criminal. He wasn't a sinner like us. He didn't deserve it, but he did it for us. That's the point, right? Yet the world will always glorify someone like that because it's run by the devil. The devil inspires these people to idolize celebrities and how do they? I'm not saying gallantry shouldn't be rewarded. Um, you know, there is clearly bravery uh, that goes on that should be commended. You know? I'm all for, you know, people, you know, doing amazing things even in times of war, but it's usually to honor the sacrifice, right? They made a sacrifice, and that's what's honoured. Uh, and obviously, the greatest sacrifice that we ever see is at the cross. But where is, you know, even in a place that's very, I suppose, religiously Roman Catholic, I haven't seen anything like, like that. Not even the idolatry of like a, I guess, a, a kind of Roman Catholic uh, Caesar Borgia looking Jesus on a cross. You know, I haven't seen it anywhere around here. It's kind of the opposite. Well, let's talk about something positive here. That is cool, right? Excellent colours, good eye. Improves the, improves the atmosphere, improves the scenario. Over there as well, because it's definitely a big thing. That's cool. I like that. I mean, I might, I might find the underlying reason for that is like LGBT. Or like or something, but still, it's cool, right? It looks, it looks 
looks good, then it's very fitting with the culture. Such an interesting statement. I mean, not only is that physically impossible, I would say, uh, but, you know, what sentiment is that? I mean, you know, what is this shop? I don't know, Pima, it doesn't actually say anything about it, but it's like, yeah, I mean, a lot of policemen are corrupt and whatever, but at the end of the day, whoever wrote that has a, has a demon tale. Right? Some more very explicit glorification of death. To be honest, it's been very difficult to find any real manifestations of the eye, uh, but it's very subtle. I would say that's one. Uh, so I don't know what shop it is, but yeah. This is quite an interesting one. It's like the, the eye being a 666 hand sign, stroke, AOK -okay hand sign, whatever you choose. But well, I mean, that's kind of eye ish and 666 -six hand ish, right? So yeah. One of the reasons I want to kind of show you this kind of stuff is I think most people just miss it, you know, like they're just walking past and they're... This is whenever I go anywhere, now I, my eyes have been opened by the Lord, I'm looking for this stuff, you know? I, I, I'm actively looking for the manifestations of whatever spirits are in this that particular area because it can help you in terms of like prayer and just... I suppose combating whatever principalities are over the, the area and if you know what manifestations are going on you, you know you can have a much better idea of what Satan is actually doing in the, in any given spot right uh, he, he does different things in different places according to what works in terms of his kingdom and you know deceiving people to serve him and, and even worship him um, and I would say there are a lot of people here that worship him uh, unwittingly probably and many of them do actually know I think I, I've seen a lot of demonic t-shirts and <laughs> it doesn't matter what language you, you speak you know you can't deny that you you know what's going on if you're wearing that kind of thing you just approve of what the devil's doing that's basically what it is but yeah whatever this tourist information board used to say someone decided that that is way more important see that there's some, you know, this is a political, I think it was the Prime Minister or something. So maybe it's political, I don't even know, but I mean, at the end of the day, come on. Do you really want people who visit your city to see that garbage? There's another satanic star. Most people don't see that as a satanic star. They think it's the Star of David or whatever. That's the exoteric version. If you know anything about witchcraft, you know that that's a very powerful witchcraft symbol. Whoever did this, I would say they did it in that, uh, with that motive rather than, you know, there are Jews here and, and we're making ourselves known. I don't think it's got anything to do with Judaism. Uh, I think it's more in line with what we just saw with the other satanic star. Anyone who agrees with this thing? Really? You want chaos? You want misery? You want destruction? You want rebellion, you don't want to, you know, you don't want peace, you don't want comfort and, and uh, you know, everybody helping each other out. What you actually want is everybody to be against each other. Anarchy, that's what anarchy represents. And that, even just painting that symbol has power in a, in a, in a kind of a spiritual sense. Like, anarchy is a... Uh, it's a spirit, and you know, sensitive people who don't know the Lord can look at something like that and, and basically rage inside and just allow those spirits to manifest and think that they're doing a good thing because other people approve of it. It's literally like, why? Why do you want that? Why would you promote that? I mean, I get the fact that, you know, politicians are evil uh, when they are not asking the Lord for wisdom and focusing on his kingdom like, like, you know anybody who's self-centered is and, and power hungry I 
I suppose, as, as a politician might be. Um, at the end of the day, that's why they're, they're doing what they do. They, they want the power, they want, the, they want to control people. There's a narcissism to it, of course. But you know, to actually want anarchy without any good reason, I mean, look how nice this place is. All these trees, with, with anarchy, all these trees would die. You know, there would be no infrastructure. There are literally people who have a full-time job feeding these trees with water because this is a desert and it's, it's a miracle that there's even like this oasis here you know uh, uh, the city um, and the infrastructure of the city is very well done in terms of getting people to do uh, to keep it as it is and, and keep it nice and clean it's very clean for a, for a latin place i mean you know it's places in i don't know europe that are, Filthy compared to this place, you know, dog poo everywhere and litter, people, you know, these kind of things are everywhere. People are very clean here, I would say, uh, and they respect their environment. So why do you want anarchy? You know, that's my question to anybody who agrees with that garbage sign I just pointed out. There are literally, I would say, thousands of murals in Mendoza. Uh, this one kind of speaks for itself. It doesn't look nice to me. There's nothing nice about that eyeballs everywhere and like terrorised fear. I mean, maybe he's pointing out, you know, the terror of having demons all around you or something. Maybe it has value in that way, but I'm pretty sure that's not his intent, right? The more interesting, I believe, demonically inspired murals. I mean, it's, like I say, they are well done. You know, that's very good art. Way. But what's behind it? What's the muse? I mean, look at this lady. I mean, is there any other kind of look of <laughs> demonic possession than that? I mean, literally tentacles coming out of her mouth and her eyes are glazed over. Oh, uh, that's nicer. But even then, the kind of eye of the bird is like, looks, uh, looks evil. How cool are the colours though, you know? Culture. I mean literally the word cult comes from the word culture, right? Um, and people who are inspired uh, by the devilish muse, whether it's in music or artistically or whatever, you can have a lovely place like that. I mean look at these trees. I mean look what God's done here. I mean, obviously, people have, like, you know, with their, with their knowledge of how trees grow and stuff, and just with nice buildings or whatever, uh, and building nice buildings, they've made this a very nice place. Yet, there is the manifestations underlying, and they're in every city, every single one. Every single city has this manifestations of people's... Um, desire for darkness and underlying despair, you know, I mean look at this, it's cool and it's not cool, you know, and there's something very strange about it, I think I'll call that the Pokemon demon, the Pokemon kind of demon. So obviously the other thing other than murals in the city are the posters that go up. Now, this guy, I've seen him everywhere. Believe me, he really, really wants you to go and listen to him talk. He's talking about the conscience, uh, the truths. I don't know what devil that is, but the truths inside of me from the conscience. I mean, it's free. I'll give him that, but at the end of the day, like, this kind of, you know, a new life, no, no, we need a new birth, mate, we need the new birth, not the new life, we want eternal life, because we got born again, you know, I mean, the other thing I noted to my friend uh, Mandela and, and Amelia earlier, um, you know, why do these guys always have massive beards? Does it does it 
you know, does it make you wiser to have a massive beard? Hmm. If that's the case, you know, I'm wise about three weeks of the month and then I shave it all off and I become a fool again. You know? Don't listen to me for one month, one, one week of a month until my beard grows long. I just want to say as a side point, um, with those kind of uh, new age, uh, I don't know, yoga, reiki, tarot cards, whatever, those occult things just on the walls in cities all the time, subliminally trying to attract you, you know, come here, come and see me, come and listen to me, you know. Um, it adds to the spiritual, I guess, power that Satan has as a principality, with his principality demons over an area. You know, and as Christians, really, you know, if we're, not, if we're not actively praying against it, then maybe, you know, where are all the Christian artists doing beautiful things in a city? That's what I want to know. Where are they all? I mean, you know, this kind of thing is just not holy. You know, there's nothing pure about it. And it frustrates me. It frustrates me. It frustrates me that Christians aren't active in a, in a, in a, in a, in their cultures really so much. You know that we we just kind of would rather hide ourselves. And if you have any kind of an artistic leaning, you know we need to use art to explain. Uh, and, and show people new revelations of the spirit uh, uh, that are holy though. You know, it can have the appearance of darkness and still be full of light. Uh, like I've said before, the cross is a prime example of that. I mean, you can look at a cross and go, oh, yeah, that instrument of torture and suffering and, you know, destruction, really. Um, Especially if the innocent, is that really a good thing? You know, of course we know as Christians it is a good thing, but not on the surface, not to, you know, it's 1 Corinthians 1.18. For the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but unto us it's the power of God, right? It's the same thing. We can do similar kind of things just with a different motive, with a different intent. Um, so yeah, God bless you. I'm going to produce fruit like that for the Lord, yeah? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> kind of looks suspicious to me. Pyramid, one eye, winking, smiling, thing. And then it looks like that, yeah? Kind of cool though. I like all these sacks of things. Jesus in that. I mean, okay, the cross is there, but is it like in the heart shape? Mary, Saint. Come on. What's that got to do with real Christianity? It's a very beautiful spot. There's the mountains in the background. Believe me when I say this is the nicest dog turd looking. This is Dolce do actually. Yeah, this is chocolate. It's very nice. And it shall be like a tree that's planted by the streams which yields its fruit in the season. And whatever he does will prosper, all that he does succeeds. Uh, his leaf will bring fruit in its season but not so the wicked. <laughs> I 
This is what I look like to the Lord. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge will be increased. In the end days, what it's going to be like. There's you, there's me. With all our knowledge increasing. And the Lord just looks down on us from afar, seeing who's actually being pure, who's actually seeking righteousness. Be like a little child into the kingdom of God. Just a one cornetto. Give it to me. Delicious ice cream from Italy. This just won the coolest tower in Latin America. Look at how amazing that is. It's like an old broken English tractor that you find in a you know in a barn somewhere. Love it. The paint job is mint as well. Praise the Lord. A thousand men It's herbal. It's nice. I like it. It's, it's, it's very strong. <laughs> yeah. It's like smoky. Smoky, herby. I like it. Great. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> Once you get, I mean, if you like it, Jim, there's no way to go. I really, really like strong flavors. Yeah. So yeah, even he, so, and that is a strong favour. <laughs> Whoever's watching that is. <laughs> Say hello to Chris. Oh, you're filming. Hello, Chris. How are you doing? I wish I could make this for you right now. I think you'd really like it. Oh, Rico. This is meant to be lamb. They didn't have lamb, so we've got beef. Instead, but it should still be nice. Yeah, it's okay. a kebab, right? Here's a kebab. It's meant to be lamb for kebab or goat. Goat will work as well. But beef it is. So it's not quite like the United States. Um, but never mind. It's very, very nice here. I hope you won't be drinking it to come and see my daughter. It's a lovely, lovely place. Just show him a little bit of his house. It's so beautiful. Yeah. This is where we're having the chicken on now to be grilled. Coming along nice fire. And there is trees.